Welcome, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, this, as you know, is our second session with Dr. Lori, and she's going to be continuing her discussion um, about the strategies and techniques to keep trauma from hijacking our brains and our hearts. Hopefully, you've all been able to practice, review the recording from last week, and for those that were last time, and for those of you that were not here last time, um, thank you for coming. We're excited, and I'm hopeful that you were able to watch that recording and practice as well. Um, I have to apologize. Bruce will not be here. He mediated until late in the morning and is just, um, I honestly have not seen him. So I'm hoping that he's sleeping a little bit before he starts his mediation today. So anyway, with that, Lori, why don't I turn it over to you? Yes, thank you. And welcome back, everyone. Uh, some, some new friends and some old friends. Um, and it would be great if you turned on your video just so I could say hello. Um, and also to see if you're tapping along with me. Uh, and so uh, if you weren't with us last, last time, just to explain um, that I have been working in... Um, war-torn countries uh, with survivors of genocide, uh, post-school shooting environments, uh, just returned from Australia, where I work with Aboriginal and uh, refugee uh, survivors as well. Um, and so uh, I'm excited to teach you what we call EFT tapping. Uh, EFT stands for Emotional Freedom Techniques. And uh, this is a form of therapy that's been around since, um, gosh, the early uh, 80s. And um, we have over 130 research studies that now document the effectiveness of this particular technique, which we refer to as a somatic release technique. And for those who of you who were with us last time, um, I really stress the emphasis that stress and trauma require somatic release techniques. That is, that stress and trauma create a brain dysfunction that must be re-regulated uh, by a somatic release technique like EFT or EMDR or neurofeedback, some, some of these other techniques that you've heard of, you may have heard of before. So EFT has been used around the world uh, in at least um, 15 countries now. And uh, I've been doing the uh, what we call this, the clinical version of EFT for trauma survivors, those people who have post-traumatic stress disorder. What I'm teaching you is the self-care version. And last time we learned tap and breathe and we learned what we call the basic EFT protocol. And so um, you also have received handouts. Is that correct, Susan? Yes, yes. And I can send them out again. I'll put them back on um, Telegram for those that did not get them last time. So you'll, you'll receive the explanation of the science behind how tapping works, as well as several handouts describing the techniques that we're going to use again today and review. But basically what's important to remember is that um, EFT tapping is a combination of acupressure points, that is like acupuncture points, acupressure without the needles, uh, which is a good thing. So what we're basically doing is stimulating certain meridian points on the face and the body that send a signal to the brain that says that the brain is safe in the presence of memories that may be stressful or traumatic. And this way, we can make sure that our bodies are regulated even in the presence of stressors. So why is that important? Because if you recall, for example, when you're feeling stressed um, or you, any trauma is being triggered, your body is sending signals into, uh, into the body. The endocrine system goes into high alert and we get adrenaline, cortisol and steroids pumping through our bodies, which gives us that sense of being highly agitated or being completely numb. 
And when we're in those places, it's really hard for our brains to function. And so I talk a lot about the heart-brain-body connection. And last time we talked about um, the HeartMath Institute, which has been around for about 30 years, which uh, lets us know that it's the heart that is the first organ to be formed in the fetus. So if the heart is the first organ to be formed, what organ is directing the development of the rest of the body? We now believe it is the heart. And so the heart has its own brain. It has its own neuronal cells that match the neuronal cells in our prefrontal cortex. So it's the heart in communication with the brain and the body that regulates our system. And so when you're in fight flight mode, you're sending indoor, you're sending these stress hormones into your body. When we're tapping on these acupressure points, we're sending a signal to the brain to pump endorphins into our bodies. Endorphin is what I call the happy hormone. This is what helps us feel a sense of peace and safety in our bodies. So when your heart and your brain and your body are at optimal functioning, this is the seat of your creativity, your problem solving skills, your sense of connection, your sense of inner wisdom, the tools that you need in order to be a good mediator, a good partner, uh, a good parent, um, a good educator, whatever your roles are. So our job is to keep you physiologically regulated. And when you're managing your own stress and trauma, those around you, literally can regulate to your body sensation. Uh, does that make any sense to people? When you're calm and you're in that place of feeling like you are in healthy control of a circumstance, other people feel that sense from you. So it can be very therapeutic doing your own work first. And I always talk about how important it is for you are literally first responders in the work that you do. You're on the front lines of stress and tension and trauma, and particularly your lifestyle right now and what's been going on in your country um, has brings with it such an added stress and trauma that it's so important for you to take care of yourselves first. Last time I introduced a technique called tap and breathe. And I'm just wondering, we just have a few faces here, uh, but I'm wondering how many people committed to doing tap and breathe every day since the last time we were together. I have a couple of people, some people nodding their heads. It seems like a strange technique. <laughs> okay, we have half and half too. <clears throat> but I'm going to review it with you now, and I'm gonna ask you to do it with me now. Um, it seems like a very simple technique, but all you need to do is tap on these certain points that I'm gonna show you. But before we do that, I just want you to take a moment to close your eyes and tune into your own body right now. And if you were to imagine a scale of zero to 10, where zero is no restriction in your breathing, and 10 is fully constricted breathing. Where would you fall on that scale of zero to 10? Where zero is no restriction in your breathing and 10 is highly constricted. Just make a note of that number. And you're just gonna start tapping with me. You can open your eyes now and with that number in mind, I just want you to tap on the side of your hand like this. And we're gonna tap as if we are breathing through a straw. And this is also gonna sound a little strange, <clears throat> but I want to hear you make that inhale. So we inhale and pause and then exhale. And the reason we do that is because many of us are not breathing properly. We're not taking the full inhale and the full exhale, which is indicative of your breathing being constrained. So we're gonna then go to the top of the head 
and you're going to inhale and exhale. And then we go to the beginning of the eye, inhale and exhale. Outside of the eye, inhale and exhale. Under the eye, inhale and exhale. Under the nose, inhale and exhale. Here on the chest, inhale and exhale. And here under the arm, right, right about there, inhale and exhale. And here on the top of the hand between the fourth and the fifth finger, inhale. And exhale. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and move inside. Tune into your breathing right now. Zero to ten. What's that number now? Do you notice any change in your number? And if you're able to pop that into the chat. What did your number start at and what are you at now? Has there been any change in your breathing? <clears throat> From a four to a two, Susan? Anyone else? From a five to a three. From a seven to a three. I went from a seven to a three. How about that? <laughs> uh, from a six to a five, five to a four. Okay, so we're seeing some movement. So let's do one more round, okay? And so tune in again to where that number is now. And we're simply gonna tap and breathe again. So we're gonna start at the side of the hand. And take that full inhale and exhale. Top of the head, inhale and exhale. Beginning of the eyebrow, inhale. And exhale. Side of the eye, inhale. And exhale. Under the eye, inhale. And exhale. Under the nose, inhale. And exhale. Under the lips, inhale. And exhale. Here on the chest, inhale. And exhale. Under the arm right here, inhale. And exhale. Top the hand between the fourth and the fifth finger, inhale. And exhale. And I'm gonna ask you to close your eyes. 
move inside and just take another breath and tune into your breathing, zero to 10. Zero being no constriction in your breathing at all, and 10 being maximum constriction. What's your number now? And pop that into the chat, if you would, where you started at and what your number is now. And just notice what you notice in your body. And so we've just done two rounds of tap and breathe. I mean, it might have taken us 10 minutes, five minutes. And in that five to 10 minutes, what are you aware of in your body? Do you notice any difference? Do you notice how constricted your breathing may have been before? And so it's just a note, it's a matter of noticing where has our mind been, right? That our bodies are so constricted. I know I used to carry a lot of my constriction up here. Um, some people carry it in the chest, some in the belly. This is all about noticing how to regulate your own physiology. I talk about that we have the medicine at our fingertips. Um, and somebody's just written, um, I wanted to sleep. Yes, well, that's an indication of how much we have literally not been taking enough oxygen in. Um, and, and when we don't take enough oxygen in, the brain thinks it's the body suffocating. And so we're in constant overdrive. And so just taking these few minutes to bring that oxygen to the brain and get those endorphins to flow, that's your mental time out during the day. And I ask people to do this every hour. And people say, well, I don't have time every hour. But you don't not have time because if you're not regulating your physiology, you're wasting a lot of time, not thinking clearly, being a little scattered, not being able to focus. Uh, the brain starts uh, or the thoughts start coming very quickly. It's hard to feel grounded. And so people who do this every hour, let's say six or seven times a day for two days, you will begin to reset your physiology. You will begin to read your own bodies to know what it is that you need in that moment you'll be much more efficient and productive. It seems like such a strange thing, but when you think about it, most of us are holding our breath most of the time, right? And even in between clients or in between sessions, instead of racing to the next thing, just take a moment, take a few inhales, a few exhales, wherever you are, you can just even pick just one point. No one needs to even know that you're tapping. You can simply hold the point, if you will, or hold the point here. Does that make any sense? Are people kind of uh, feeling the difference in your body? Yeah. And anyone who's done this regularly since our last call, um, any any words of wisdom you can offer for people um, to uh, to gently encourage them to do this tap and breathe? I'll start. <laughs> um, I um, started doing it. You're going to laugh, but I take a morning, a really cold morning shower just to help me sleep later on. Um, it works for me, but it's hard for me because I'm a total cold water wimp. So I do the deep breathing and I tap and breathe while the ice water is on me. And I don't know, Lori, if you would agree with that, but it sure makes it so it doesn't bother me as much. Listen, <laughs> it's funny that you say this because, of course, our connection is Rwanda. And when I was teaching this to my teenagers in an, um, a, an orphanage with 650 teenagers who thought that tapping 
on their heads and bodies was completely ridiculous, but they were doing it for the white chick because the white chick apparently was doing it. So I sent them off to, uh, to research whether tap and breathe actually worked. And the next morning, two of the girls were just laughing and giddy about, uh, and they finally said, you know, we thought this was, well, whatever they, the word that they would use, <laughs> crazy. And um, and so we they only take bucket showers because there's no hot and cold you know running water, and so they used tap and breathe before they took their bucket shower, um, and it worked. And to to watch them say it, to have that experience, it really works on everything. And um, it's also, if you can imagine, it's a great pain reliever because it's spreading endorphins into your body. And so endorphins are going to give you a, a more of a sense of warmth in your body. So you're literally stimulating uh, stress relief and um, it's great for headaches. It's great for back pain, neck pain, all kinds of things. Um, now there's another protocol that we did last time, which we can do again, because in your handouts, you will see I've given you uh, instructions on tap and breathe, which are very simple, right? We're just tapping on these points as we take a full inhale and a full exhale on each of the points. There's another protocol uh, that we used last time. We used it on what we called a petty annoyance. Uh, this is a protocol that allows us to add words to our experience and um, actually to be able to creatively problem solve an issue for ourselves. Now, the reason we used a petty annoyance, which is simply something that may have aggravated you, when you think of a scale of zero to 10, with zero being no aggravation and 10 being highly aggravated, pick something that's between a zero to a five. Um, so just think about something that might have been annoying to you the last couple of days. It could be, you know, I, I use the the kids left their socks on the floor or they didn't put their dishes in the dishwasher or, you know, some some petty annoyance that is still kind of um, has your attention, whether it's uh, something in traffic or something in your day, but isn't quite the worst trauma you ever had. OK, so I want you to each pick something that was annoying to you in the last couple of days on a scale of zero to 10. Make sure it's a five or below. And the reason why we're doing that is because I want you to have an experience and I don't want you to use something that is so triggering um, that it might dysregulate you. Um, and so have you all got a uh, a little petty annoyance in mind as we go through this exercise? Uh, okay, great. So when I say the term petty annoyance, you're just going to put your own, you're going to think of your own petty annoyance, okay? So this is what we're going to do. We start off with what we call um, a setup statement where we combine the problem with what we want to be experiencing. So in this case, the problem is a petty annoyance. I'm just using that general term. You're going to plug in what you're thinking about. And then we combine it with what we want to experience. And in our case, we like to say, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. That's what we want to be experiencing. Doesn't necessarily mean we're there in this moment. But if we take the problem and we combine it with a solution, we're sending a signal to the brain that it's safe in the presence of the triggers that might be annoying us in the moment. So the setup statement in our case is going to be, even though I have this petty annoyance, I'm gonna say petty annoyance and you're gonna think about your particular one. So even though I have this petty annoyance, I deeply and completely love and accept myself, okay? We're going to repeat that three times, and then we're going to use the petty annoyance on these reminder points. But all you need to do is to follow along with me, and then we'll take some questions afterwards. So <clears throat> we're going to start with the first of our setup statement. 
And you can repeat this out loud um, if you prefer or silently to yourself. So even though I have this petty annoyance, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Second time, even though I have this petty annoyance, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Third time, even though I have this petty annoyance, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. <clears throat> this petty annoyance, top of the head, beginning of the eyebrow, I've got this petty annoyance. Side of the eye, I've got this petty annoyance. Under the eye, I've got this petty annoyance. Under the nose, I've got this petty annoyance. Under the lips, I've got this petty annoyance. Here on the chest, I've got this petty annoyance. Under the arm, I've got this petty annoyance. Top of the hand, the gamut point, I've got this petty annoyance. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. Take a full inhale, full exhale, and just tune into your petty annoyance, zero to 10. What's that number now? And if you could pop into the chat what you're, what's number you started at and what number you are at now, that would be great. So Susan started at a three, <clears throat> went to a zero. We've got a three to a two. Ooh, we've got an eight to a six. Ole, you went above a five. <laughs> Sorry, I, I remember that it should be just a petty annoyance, but I decided to make a little experiment and it worked really. Well, then I'm going to speak to you for sure. <clears throat> Um, and but before I speak to you, we're going to do another round. I see we have a number of fives and above, and I just respect the fact that you all have a lot of stress and trauma, um, and that we just don't do one round and expect everything to clear. Okay, uh, for those of you who went to a, a two or a three or below. You may tune into your petty annoyance and see if there's been any shift in your thinking or anything that you're aware of about your petty annoyance. Um, but we're going to do another round right now. We keep doing these rounds until we get to a zero to two. And that's generally when our physiology uh, is clear enough for us to see some kind of shift in our thinking. And I'm going to check in with you after we do uh, this round. And so just take that full inhale and that full exhale for me. <clears throat> and we're going to start again with, even though I still have this petty annoyance, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Second time, even though I still have this petty annoyance, <clears throat> I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Third time, even though I have this petty annoyance, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. <clears throat> Top of the head, 
this petty annoyance. Beginning of the eyebrow. <clears throat> Excuse me. This petty annoyance. Side of the eye, this petty annoyance. Under the eye, this petty annoyance. Under the nose, this petty annoyance. Under the lips, this petty annoyance. Here on the chest, this petty annoyance. Under the arm, this petty annoyance. Top of the hand, this petty annoyance. I'm gonna ask you to close your eyes, take that full inhale, that full exhale, and tune into your petty annoyance, zero to 10. <clears throat> What's that number now? And just pop into the chat where you were at and where you are now. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Ole says, um, went from an eight to a six to a three. <clears throat> we have a five to a two, a three to a two, three to a two. How about my person who was a nine to a seven? But excellent, excellent. <clears throat> and again, we would um, continue to do this until you were zero to two. It's like peeling away the layers of an onion, if you will. Um, so for those people who went down to a two or a zero or a one, did you notice any shift in how you were thinking about the petty annoyance? What did you notice? What happened? Who will be brave enough to to speak. I'll, I'll speak. Again, I don't want to take anybody's uh, place, but I did it with you after I had already kind of lost my petty annoyance. Mm -hmm. What's interesting is as I did it, I started to think about creative ways that I could approach it next time. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So it's kind of like a, it not just released it from my shoulders, which is where I hold everything, mm -hmm. but also my brain. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And could you tell me in just a couple of words, what was the subject of your petty annoyance? Someone that I work with, some uh, 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 contractor with us. Mm -hmm. And um, these creative solutions. Uh, How I could approach next time I have something for them to do. Okay. Beautiful. And how did you know that that was a creative solution for you? Like what was happening in your body? What was different? I, I, my brain just started thinking about other ways, mm -hmm. other things I could do <clears throat> rather than be stuck on, darn it, they didn't make the deadline and they didn't do this. Right, right. Which from that contracted place, our brains aren't, you know, uh, our heart brain body connection is not optimized. And so- we get stuck in the complaint mode and then we don't see yes. the yeah. situation. Um, Ole, I'm anxious to hear uh, in a couple of words, what was the subject of your experiment? Uh, Laurie, the subject of this experiment was uh, my <clears throat> irritation about a deal. Uh, it's about one million grievances. For today, it's about it's about five uh, fifty thousand dollars. It's quite a big deal for our company. Okay. Uh, about uh, the product which should be uh, shipped to a dealer, and it was mm, so everything uh, should be done before today, and all the letters were written, all the preparations should be done, but unfortunately they didn't. And so there is a great amount of calls 
and it's just a manual just uh, so I have to do it uh, by my own uh, telephone by my own brain just to to make this product cheap in time and to manage just to get it in time and to the client to be happy and it quite emotionally um, it takes a lot of emotions yes and uh, I tried to first uh, after the first uh, time we did our tapping and breathing, uh, I understand that uh, I'm not so disturbed because uh, just during uh, we, uh, why I did it. Because when we were doing our exercise, my telephone ran one more time and it disturbed me, it triggered me. So I decided to make this experiment. The first time I understood that uh, my rotation. Uh, gun lower and the second time we were doing it uh, during the first half of the exercise I just try to think why I'm irritated what made me um, feel like this what are the reasons and actually I understood that the reasons were uh, that uh, I have my free time that I organized to me and I understood that these calls just take this free time from me and it disturbs me. And uh, the second was just, I stopped pronouncing this petty annoyance, the manager calls and just understood that I start to uh, say this, Petty annoyance. To, so repeat it. Uh, what you said. Just I understood that um, uh, it's stopped disturbing me. Um, just the way it was. So it's a great drop for me from eight to three. So thank you for this, Lori. Mm. And uh, Ole. Uh, so at this place of a three, what is possible? when you think about this issue? Uh, it's possible just not to pick up the phone until my tomorrow work time, because I know that everything is done completely and uh, um, the order is shipped and nothing more could be done to improve this uh, uh, this uh, this shipping of this uh, try to find the word okay and just yes. uh, uh, the, so uh, the uh, gestalt is closed yes so and tomorrow i could answer all the questions but not today and today this, i'm with you okay and this may sound like a funny question but is that explanation coming from your heart or your head Mm, it's a nice question. I have to think. Just tune into your body. Maybe. <clears throat> uh, I think it's more uh, from here than from here. Beautiful. This is where those shifts occur. Imagine other people on the call. Imagine that we can think clearly enough to say, oh, I don't have to pick up the phone. It seems like an easy solution, but to the person who is stressed and who is locked into a particular concern or aggravation, uh, it doesn't come to mind. So this Ole is a perfect example of how we can go from you know high tension to to uh feeling so much more in healthy control and i ask people if it's coming from if the answer is coming from their heart or their head because when the answer comes from your heart the aha it's a physiological change in your body right um, and so i really uh, would also like to invite someone else who had an experience with this petty annoyance that might have been able to get down to a, 
a two or a one or a zero, I'd like to invite your exp uh, your uh, comments on what you experienced with your particular petty annoyance. If you started, um, let's say, at a five and you went down to a two or a one or a zero, what, what did you notice in your body? What did you notice in your mind? And keep in mind that we are not trying to tap out the problem. We are simply allowing you to be in a place where you feel physiologically regulated in order to deal with whatever it is that's uh, that has triggered your physiology. <clears throat> Anyone else brave enough to share your experience? Or any other questions you might have? And again, I realize that we're just using this one experience of, of a petty annoyance. Um, not everyone was at a petty annoyance. Uh, is it, is it uh, Mariah who went from a nine to a seven to a four? Uh, um, and, but we have- We have a couple of hands. Three. Yes, perfect. Owner, is that correct, owner? Uh, would you go ahead, owner? Am I saying that correctly? Так, скажіть, будь ласка, Лорі, я... Yes, please, uh, if I may, I have a question. When doing my homework after the first uh, session, I was practicing, uh, and I faced... Uh, a, a, a serious uh, issue uh, which consisted in uh, uh, the absence of triggers. I realized at some point in time that there were no trig no PT annoyances. So where to, to, to look for them? You don't have any petty annoyances. Nothing bothers you. Let's bottle that and sell it. Лорі, так вийшло. Так вийшло, що разом з вами я проходжу курси. Yes, actually, it so happened happened that uh, I'm uh, um, also taking uh, a course uh, of resilience, uh, and uh, uh, I'm practicing uh, both. Uh, things uh, in in parallel in the framework of uh, various uh, uh, techniques uh, and i think it helps uh, uh, that is why i'm very grateful to you and uh, to uh, colleagues uh, from another course because even if i face problems uh, i can get over them very quickly mm, beautiful beautiful and look there are um clinical applications to this uh, also that go much deeper than what we're doing in our practice sessions. Um, and I can certainly demonstrate that um, if we have time today, which I think we will. Uh, but I'm just thrilled to hear that in your own practice of this, you notice the difference of what's happening in your body. Um, that if I could give that gift to everyone on the planet, um, you, you all might be out of a job. You might not have to do any mediation anymore. <laughs> uh, but in any event, when you can imagine that this is also, if this is what's happening inside of you, this is a gift we want to give to our clients too, even if it's just tap and breathe before you do a session with someone. When you feel comfortable enough in your own results, um, you might be willing to even start a session uh, this way or end it. I think it's a great way to manage a session because oftentimes your clients come in and it's it's kind of like a mind dump, right? Uh, I don't know how you say that in Ukrainian. Um, but the client comes in and just wants to re regurgitate all of this stuff. And they're physio 
physiology is not regulated. So you don't have control over this session until they're calm. Um, I do this opening with every session and I close every session with it. Um, the client feels safer. There's much more productivity that happens, um, but you have to feel confident in it, in your own, how it works for you uh, before you actually do it um, with a client, if that makes sense. Uh, we had some other hands raised, um, but now they're down again. I think Yulia had her hand raised. Not anymore. I see. Yeah, she's not. Not anymore. Okay. А мені здається, була ще рука у Юлії Маслової. I uh, guess that uh, Yulia Maslova uh, was raising her hand. Yes, indeed, it was me. I uh, just wanted to uh, share my experience. Uh, so since uh, the previous uh, session, I didn't uh, uh, manage to uh, practice uh, regularly. Uh, I do not manage uh, to uh, tap uh, um, regularly. Uh, so I can only dedicate like five to 10 minutes uh, every time, but it gets uh, easier uh, every time I do it. Beautiful, beautiful. And, you know, there are um, little moments in our day that whether you're standing in line somewhere waiting for something, whether you're making a phone call and listening to the phone ring, these are always opportunities. If you think of these points, see how it's a natural point. Nobody even has to see you doing it, right? Um, when we think of, you know, these kinds of points. Um, and again, you can pick one point and just tap and breathe. Now. Uh, let me make a distinction between tap and breathe and the basic protocol. The basic protocol is what we did the petty annoyance with. This helps us get to the details of what's really bothering us. Ole did a, a, a beautiful uh, reframe himself. He started at an eight and it sounded to me that, you know, it was a lot about this big issue. But then as we tapped, it came down to, oh, this is interfering with my free time. That was the aspect that was meaningful to Ole at the time. So you see, he actually came to a place of self-regulation, of understanding himself more uh, because of the, the wording that we used with this protocol. Whereas tap and breathe can certainly get you a similar result um, but it's, uh, you don't have to worry about the words so much. Um, you know, we have time, uh, and I, I really appreciate that people, you know, will get off the call and just forget, like, okay, that's great. I felt good for 10 minutes. But um, honestly, I can absolutely tell you that you will receive a benefit from doing this, even if you just do it in the morning before you get out of bed and at night before you go to sleep, um, you will find a difference in your body. And this is what you want to give to your loved ones and your clients is the ability to feel safe in their bodies and their minds. Um, now, I'm also happy if, if uh, other people don't have questions, I'm happy to do a one-on-one a -on -one session with someone and let me explain, if someone, if there's something that you might want to work on, the two of us can do this work together on the call, everyone will tap along with us and everyone gets a benefit, no matter what we're tapping on. There's actually been research that uh, talks about mirror neurons. When we do this in a group, the healing effect is amplified and everyone's regulation goes down and it's easier to uh, to 
to deal with whatever stress or uh, issue might be arising in the moment because of that uh, group tapping that we've done. Um, so if anyone would like to uh, come forward with uh, uh, something you might want to work on, we don't have to go into the story of what's behind it, just a few words of what the issue might be. Uh, I see someone with a thumbs up. Does that mean you'd like to work with me? I, I, uh, I can't pronounce your name, whoever had there. The thumbs up there. Pani Ludmila, Ludmila Malishova. Uh, it is uh, Ludmila. Ludmila. It seems that Ludmila Malishova is willing to have this one-to-one uh, -one session. If it's possible, I would like to. Perfect. And so um, everyone, I want everyone to uh, to tap along with us. And um, I'm just going to ask you, Ludmilla, in just a couple of words, what is the subject of the thing that is concerning you? Dad. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, thank you for uh, offering uh, your help. Uh, the technique uh, works uh, uh, perfectly uh, well. I even uh, I was even feeling better when we had that uh, terrible night uh, where um, uh, our city was under shelling. Uh, now speaking of. Uh, uh, my uh, situation uh, or whenever i get into any stressful uh, situation uh, i have some reaction uh, from my heart uh, I, I i'm not talking about any particular uh, uh, situation but in general uh, whenever i come across any stressful situation no matter uh, how uh, big or small uh, it is i have this Hot uh, reaction every time. Um, uh, so, Ludmilla, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna pause you there for a moment. So, in this moment, zero to ten, how concerning is that problem for you right now? With ten being the highest intensity and zero being none. I would say eight. <clears throat> Okay, um, and so I'm going to ask you this question. Of all of the aspects of this heart situation, which is the most intense for you right now? Of all the different parts of having this heart reaction, which is the most intense? I have uh, uh, this uh, excessive high beating, uh, heart beating. I can feel it. I can feel that my heart beats much faster than usually. So let's just, we're going to start tapping here. Is it beating fast right now? <clears throat> Uh, yes, a, a, a bit. Uh, because uh, I recall uh, various situations and I can feel my heart uh, racing. Right. So right in this moment, zero to ten, how intense is your heart beating to you right now? Without thinking about anything, zero to ten. You mentioned an eight. Is an eight correct? Uh, while tapping, I can feel uh, uh, a number going down uh, to seven, to six. Okay. So um, 
what is the emotion associated with this racing heart? Does it make you afraid? Does it make you angry? Strong. Strong. Uh, I, 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 I feel afraid. Uh, I had uh, uh, some uh, um, uh, problems uh, uh, with medical problems uh, with my heart, and that is why I feel afraid whenever it comes to my heart. Yep. Okay, so I just want you to repeat after me, and I want everyone to tap along, please. <clears throat> Even though I have this heart racing fear, and it's living in my body. And even though that's true, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though I have this heart racing fear. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though I have this heart racing fear, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. I'm just going to ask you to take a full inhale and a full exhale. I'm going to start at the top of the head. Heart racing fear. And just say that with me. Heart racing fear. Beginning of the eyebrow. Heart racing fear. Side of the eye. Heart racing fear. Under the eye, heart racing fear. Under the nose, heart racing fear. Under the lips, heart racing fear. Here on the chest, heart racing fear. Under the arm, heart racing fear. Top of the hand, heart racing fear. I'm gonna ask you to close your eyes and take a full inhale and a full exhale and tune into heart racing fear, zero to 10, what's that number now? It's about two. I, I, I feel quite calm now, but while I was tapping and doing the exercise, I, I felt I sensed my eyes filling with tears at some point, but then it it subsided. And I'm really sincerely grateful to you because this is my a very uh, old problem. And now I feel better. So 
how do you how do you know it's a two? Describe the difference between an eight and a two in your body. Spooky, yucky, spooky. I feel so much calmer. I feel lightness. And uh, I'm not so much fixated anymore on my problem. Rather, I am okay with my entire body. So this is a very light sensation and as so, opposed to heavy. Yes. And so when you think about having this heart racing issue, what comes up now? What's possible in this place of a two? Spooky. I feel calm. I, I notice lack of fixation on this problem. I feel confident and I feel calm. Beautiful. And would it be safe, do you think, to go to zero on this issue? I think it, it would be great. It's, it's my big, big wish. So let's do another round. No expectation, but let's do another round. And if you all would tap with me, um, just notice what you notice in your body when you're tapping along. Um, and so Ludmilla, um, even though, and just repeat after me, I still have some of this heart racing fear. And all that means to me. Yeah. I love and accept myself anyway. Even though. I still have some of this heart raising fear. And all that means to me. I love and accept myself anyway. Even though. I still have some of this heart racing fear. And all that means to me. And I love and accept myself anyway. Still have some of this heart racing fear. Still have some of this heart racing fear. I still have some of this heart racing fear. I still have some of this heart racing fear. I still have some of this heart racing fear. Still have some of this heart racing fear. Here on the chest, I still have some of this heart racing fear. Under the arm, I still have some of this heart racing fear. 
And on the gamut point, I still have some of this heart racing too. And I'm going to ask you to close your eyes, take that full inhale and that full exhale. And tune into heart racing fear, zero to 10. What's that number now? Ну, я десь на двійці так він не знаходиться. Probably somewhere around two still, but my body responds with even more calmness. It's not like the first, during the first round when I was uh, tearful. Now I was so more, uh, so much more calm. I am really grateful. I will write it down. Uh, and uh, can I repeat it for myself later? Of course, yes. And had we had more time, we would look a little bit more deeply into those aspects of what is holding that two in place. What are those specific fears? We would go there next. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. And I would really encourage you to do tap and breathe every hour. Just the tap and breathe every hour. You will begin to interrupt mm -hmm. the flow of all of that adrenaline and steroids. Um, so try that for two days, and then you can also use what we just practiced as well. So you see that this inner safety is everything. Feeling that sense that, my, that I can be one with my body, that I can be safe in my body, is the answer to so many of our issues. Um, and I, I so appreciate you being willing to bring this forward, Ludmilla. I'm curious to see if other people received a benefit from the tapping that we did. I am so grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. This is a great topic for me, very important one. So I, I'm really deeply grateful. Beautiful. And it feels like magical, but it's... No, that's quite all right. I was saying it, feel, it can feel like magic, but it really is scientific what's happening. We are literally creating endorphins flowing in our bodies by doing this. So any medication that the doctor would give you, endorphins is the answer anyway. And um, also to say that when our eyes water, that's a sign that our um, physiology is relaxing. If, you, if you're yawning, that means your physiology is react, uh, relaxing. If you're burping, uh, the word burp in uh, Ukrainian, that means your physiology is relaxing. So I'm the only speaker in the world who loves to see an audience full of people who are yawning. <laughs> and so we have about 15 minutes. Yeah. Um, love to answer any questions. Um, obviously, the piece of work that we did with Ludmilla gives you an opportunity to see how, when we get specific, the issues can, uh, we can have a greater aha or awareness uh, of our own selves. Um, so, if there are any questions, uh, the whole thing is practice, practice, practice. Some people um, 
will read the instructions or even watch this video and they'll read the instructions, but they won't actually practice it. And the, they may say, well, I tried, it didn't work. It does require attention and a bit of consciousness that we bring to it. Um, but you can't, it's too easy not to do, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Lori, can I ask a question? Of course. Once you go through the six times, two days in a row, six times a day, two days, for two days, what's a maintenance? Because I find in my day-to-day, -day, especially work, I get these annoyances and I'd like to be able to handle them. Or, you know, even like you said, traffic, someone cuts you off or kids do, do something silly. Um, What's kind of a maintenance? Um, and I wish that I could give you a, a straight answer on that. Depending on the level of your stress, you may, I have people who do it every hour, every day. Okay. But so we have something in the brain called a reticular activating system. It's like a tuning fork. And some of our, uh, it's a set point of our reticular activating system is very high. And so it takes a while to get the body used to endorphins. Um, I tell the story of uh, when I was going to my therapist, I said, uh, I think I'm depressed. And my therapist said, why? And I said, because I'm not anxious anymore. <laughs> I didn't know what to do in the presence of endorphins. It was a strange, it was a strange feeling. So it took a while. Um, but it it's basically whatever it takes, whatever you need to get to that place of feeling that your body is that you're one with your body, that you're in sync with your body, that your body is not uh, working against you, if that makes sense. Yeah. OK, thank you. And owner, we have a question. Yes, please. Paula. Like you said, we have to bottle it up and sell it. Uh, this feeling which you mentioned, uh, lack of anxiety that you mentioned to your therapist. So uh, basically your practice is very good. Now to my question. Uh, Lori, my question is as follows. When we are tapping, uh, how important is it what exactly we say uh, these uh, statements or affirmations I deeply love and accept myself? Would an only tapping and breathing be enough or should we also repeat these words? Uh, great question. And so tap and breathe allows us to regulate our physiology. Whereas the protocol that we did for petty annoyance and for Ludmilla's heart racing issue allows us to become more aware of, of ourselves and what is really troubling us. Like um, when Ole did an example where he started at an eight with a business problem, but got down to a three, um, because when he started to realize, hey, wait a minute, this is the thing that I'm really aggravated about is that it's uh, taking away my free time. That's the aha. That's that's why this is gold, because he got his own aha. I didn't have to tell him what it was. So using the basic EFT protocol as it is written out in the handouts that I have sent, there's a very specific way that we create this setup statement. We ask ourselves first, what is bothering me? What is the issue, right? So let's just say uh, my example of, um, they didn't put the dishes in the dishwasher, right? Then I ask myself of all of the aspects of them not putting the dishes in the dishwasher, which one bothers me the most? Is it because I think they don't care 
uh, or they're lazy or they expect me to do everything for them. Uh, it could be any number of things. In my case, it's, I think they're disrespecting me. So that's what I tap on. Even though they're disrespecting me, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. See, I've been very specific with the aspect I've chosen. So we just name the issue and we connect it to, in my case, I like to use, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Or you can say, I love and accept myself anyway. Um, there's something about being able to love and us accept ourselves that brings us that peace and safety in our hearts. Even if we're not experiencing it in the moment, it's what we want to be experiencing. So it's not just an affirmation, it's a setup statement that names the problem and the solution. When people try to change the wording, um, it, it can, that's a whole nother class that we have to teach um, uh, because it's very specific, the wording, but you make it specific by coming up with what is specific to you, to your issue. Does that make sense? Did I answer your question, owner? Doc, doc, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, thank you, Laurie. Oksana uh, Milchenko. Uh, could we uh, use this technique for children? And if yes, from uh, what age? So children love this. They love it because they are in touch with their bodies, right? Um, you can use it for any age person, any age at all. You can actually tap on the children for them. So you can tap on their points for them. Um, and it's so simple. I ask parents to uh, for with, of young children, um, to start the day with tapping and end the day with tapping. So let's just say the kids are getting ready for school. Um, I ask them to do three rounds. One round is what's troubling them? What are the yuckies? I call, do you have the word yucky in Ukraine? You know, a, a childish, a childish, ooh, that's yucky. No, not really. <laughs> Okay, um, but you know what? Uh, what would be upsetting for a child, right? So you have them tap on what's upsetting them, and then you have them tap on what they have to be grateful for. And you'll learn so much about your children. What do they? What's a blessing for them, or what makes them grateful? And then, in some of the communities that I've worked in, we then do a round of what makes them feel safe. What makes you feel safe? And they just fall asleep to that at the end of the day. So it's a lovely uh, exercise for both the parents and the children. Um, if, if your child is upset, all you have to do is say, even though Johnny's upset right now, he's a good kid anyway. Even though Johnny's upset right now, I love and accept myself anyway. Does that make sense? Keep it simple. But kids really do beautifully with this. And we have tapping in the classroom where literally the teacher and the students are tapping for each other. They're tapping to, to increase their test scores. Um, they, bullying goes down when they tap as a group. Uh, test scores go up, absences go down. Um, it's really phenomenal.
So really, your um, biggest investment is to spend 10 minutes a day practicing this. Um, and you can sp spend obviously a little bit more on the tap and breathe, but practice, practice, practice. Yes, Ole, you're gonna be teaching this class next with your- <laughs> Laurie, every time, uh, you know, uh, I've seen this te technology, if I can call it, maybe it's mm -hmm. a piece of art, uh, the second time and every time I, know something new for me something interesting so thank you for every time uh, maybe after ten thousand times maybe i could teach somebody but actually thank you very much for you know, uh, your uh, words about yearning i used it a few weeks ago in the auditory and when one girl start uh, on the lecture when she started yawning and uh, it was quite intensive Election, I said, I uh, thank you very much because for me, yawning, it's about your safeness. You feel safe here. And she was very like interested and said, Yeah, thank you for this. And actually, a little update about uh, the business issue. Uh, it was sold now by two SMS. I just understood that SMS uh, are not disturbing me because I can, can pay attention to you and to our session. So I can solve it by SMS. And it's okay now. Brilliant. Excellent. I want a commission on that business. <laughs> mm. uh, if you uh, need some biological pesticides, so please write down <laughs> where, can, where we can send them. Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, I so appreciate your time and your attention. Uh, I know that you have so many things to attend to in your day and that your your lives are stressful and everything that's happening in your country is stressful. Your work is stressful. Um, please, please give this gift to yourself. Uh, um, we need you on the front lines, you know, and uh, your clients need you, your kids need you, your country needs you. Uh, and I'm not exaggerating here. The the biggest gift we can give anyone in the world is our presence and our resiliency. Um, and you are all certainly being uh, tested in that regard. And a, a big thank you to Susan and Bruce for um, inviting me. I'm available anytime. Um, I love this work. I love turning people on to this work. Uh, if you ever have any questions, please don't hesitate to uh, to reach out. Um, Lori, can you, you can either send it to me and I will send it, put it out by telegram, but Lori has been, um, her social, her Facebook account, I believe, and your Instagram account have been hacked. Yes. Others. yes. So um, she has a new Facebook. Do you have, uh, and you might, if you could put it in the chat right now. Yeah. It's just my name uh, because the other one is has been disabled. So um, if you search for my name on Facebook, you'll find the only okay the only okay. account they allowed me to enable at the moment. Okay. I've lost I've lost all my friends, three thousand oh. friends. Oh my god. Um, and I will we will of course send out the recording. And I will include the handouts that Lori referred Great. to as well. So stay in touch with Lori. You can um, reach her at her. Your email is still good, correct? Yes. Yep. Okay. okay. Um, and then um, let me know what we can do if you need anything else on the Telegram, on Telegram as well. All right. Let me give you my Zoom hug. <laughs> Uh, have a great rest of your evening, and uh, uh, I hope to see you again at some point. And Lori, thank you so much for your time and everything you've given us. This has been amazing. My pleasure. Thank you. Everybody have a wonderful evening, and we will see you soon. Thank Bye. you so much. Thank you very much.